God bless Adonai, for he is good. Praise Adonai, for he is good. Let Israel sing, our Adonai is good. Let us sing praises, for Adonai is good. Oh, shalom. Shalom, friends. Welcome. Welcome to Jerusalem, to Jericho. So you're passing through, going to Jerusalem for the Passover, I hear. Well, my name is Simon Ben Joseph. I used to be a Pharisee in Bethany many, many years ago. I moved to Jericho not too long ago to open up a new business. Where are you from? Adonai, oh Adonai, he is good. He is good for he is good. So you're coming down from Capernaum, long way from Capernaum, about a week is taking you to get here to, to Jericho. Well, let me offer you some water. Hannah, Hannah, get some water. We got some, uh, some extra loaves for our friends here. They're on a long journey to Jerusalem to observe the Passover. Please, come have a seat. Come have a seat. You must be tired from your journey from Capernaum, and you're headed to Jerusalem. You know, I used to be from Bethany, and then I moved here to Jericho. Bethany, what a beautiful little quaint town Bethany was. Right there in the eastern slopes of the Mount of Olives, just a bustling, small, quaint little town. I used to love traveling over to Jerusalem to go to the temple and do my morning prayers. And then that evening when I would walk back to Bethany, I would get to the hills of, Mount, of the Mount of Olives right before I descended down the eastern slopes. I would look back over my shoulder and look at Jerusalem and the setting sun just glistening off the temple. Such a beautiful, beautiful picturesque sight. I hope you get to see that sight when you're making your travel, you know, to Bethany. So Lazarus, you say? Oh, I, I knew Lazarus. You know, I hear he's really dead now. He was raised from the dead by Jesus. And that's really where my story begins. Please come have a seat. Let me tell you my story about the day that I met Jesus. Hannah, do you got that water yet? That, that bread? Our guys are, are perishing right here. Oh, don't worry. They need to hear this story. It'll change their life, you know, forever. So my name is Simon. And I was one of the keepers of the law. People would call me a Pharisee. Now, Pharisee in my day was not a very popular person to be. But we Pharisees, we were the keepers of the law. I knew the law. I grew up loving the law. My dad owned a prosperous merchant business. He sent me as a young kid to, to get trained in the law. And I grew up loving the law and working side by side with my father as his business prospered. And then one day, it happened. It was the most amazing thing I'd ever seen. Lazarus, they say, was raised from the dead. It was one of those things where we didn't know what to believe. Oh, Jesus, you say, oh, that's who I'm talking about. Jesus Christ raised this man, Lazarus, from the dead. You see, Jesus, the stories about him were incredible. And as a Pharisee, a young Pharisee, I didn't know or understand what to make of Jesus. I'd heard these stories about how Jesus had healed people. I heard these stories about in my own town, in Bethany, he healed a man with leprosy. He even traveled to Samaria. Now, every good Jew knows you don't go into that despicable territory, and much less talk to a woman who had been married several times. This Jesus, I tell you, he was uh, a controversial person. And somebody growing up loving the law, I didn't know what to make of Jesus. He had healed people, and for goodness sakes, he was healing people on the Sabbath, 
didn't he understand the fourth commandment? You don't work on the Sabbath. But yet Jesus was healing people on the Sabbath day. It, it made my, my pharisaical brethren just incensed the way that Jesus just kind of went contrary to the law. I mean, if he's, a, if he's the Jew that he says he is, if he's the son of God that he says he was, he would know to keep the law. But yet, throughout my town in Bethany, even right here in Jericho, people talk about how Jesus healed them. Jesus talked about how they were going to have the kingdom of God. Didn't he know who I was? Who us Pharisees were? We were the keepers of the law. We were the righteous ones. These people obviously had sin in their life. How could they be held in more esteem than me? And the very next day was the day that really changed my life forever. I remember going to, to bed that night there in Bethany. I, I had butterflies in my stomach. I couldn't go to sleep. I would get up periodically and pray. I would read the Torah. I would get, look back and try and lay down. And then finally, I just got up and I just marched to Jerusalem. You see, I had heard that there were some rumors that Jesus was maybe going to come into the town of Jerusalem. Well, my pharisaical brethren, they were out to arrest him if he showed up into Jerusalem on that day. But I went on into Jerusalem to prepare for the Passover feast, the Passover festival, to welcome all these pilgrims as they purified themselves and were making preparations to observe the Passover. And I remember early in, later in that morning, I remember hearing the buzzing. The air was just thick with electricity. The air was just thick with revolutionary fervor because there were talk about Jesus coming into Jerusalem and we were out to arrest him. But there were others who felt that Jesus was maybe some kind of king and he was coming into Jerusalem to announce his kingdom here on earth. Well, I remember making my way down the temple, out towards the gate. I couldn't get away from the crowds of people that were just all over the streets. It was like the stars of the sky. There were so many people there with their burlap straps, and so many people came to picnic on the Mount of Olives, and they were there to purify themselves. And then I kept hearing this chanting, this riotous chanting. Ana Yahweh, Hosiana. Ana Yahweh, Hosiana. Save us. Hosanna, blessed is the king, the king of Israel. I kept marching down the street, and I was with some of my pharisaical friends, and I kept hearing it. Hosanna, Hosanna, save us, save us. King of David, you are the king of Israel. I tell you, it made my brethren furious. But the crowds of the people that were there that saw this man, was hearing this man come. And I remember very distinctly, as I got close to the gate, there he was, riding in on a donkey. And yet the crowd was chanting, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is the Savior, save us. And I saw him coming in. And my pharisaical brothers were just shouting, just shanning. Do you know who you are? Do these people know who this man is? If he knew the law, he knew what he's doing. He's riding in. He read the scriptures. The scriptures say that he would ride in on a donkey. He's not the Savior. But everybody in the crowd, Hosanna, Hosanna, save us. Save us, for you are the king. And I remember as he got towards closer to where I was, I had a stone in my hand. Many of my brethren, too, had a stone in their hands as well. And we were ready to take that stone and throw it at this rabbi, this man who thinks he's coming in proclaiming that he is the Messiah. And I remember distinctly as Jesus 
came down on that donkey. It's like he stared me right in the eyes. And I couldn't help. My brethren were shouting to him, quiet your disciples, quiet your followers. And it's as if Jesus was peering right at me. I had this stone in my hand just ready to throw it right at Jesus. And it's like he was peering right into me. What are you going to do, Simon? And as my brethren were shouting at Jesus to quiet down the crowds, I remember distinctly Jesus saying these words. I can't quiet the crowds. If I quiet the crowds, even the stones will cry out to him. And, and it's like in that instance, as a Pharisee, as a man holy in the scriptures, as someone who was trying to teach the people righteousness, and I couldn't stand this man, Jesus, is as if he peered into my eyes and the very stone that was in my hands, it's like it was quaking in my hands, crying out in praise, Simon, Simon, this is the Messiah. This is the Son of God. Jesus, at that moment, after he peered into my eyes, he just kind of went on the, his way as he made his way up to the temple. And I remember struggling in my heart, my pharisaical brethren still just in sense. One of my brethren said to us, he said, we can do nothing. The world has gone after him. We've tried to do everything. We can do nothing. We are powerless to stop just a mere man from the crowds following him. And I remember when he reached the temple, I started walking back home to Bethany that evening. The sun coming down and setting over the temple once more. And as I looked back over the temple, I couldn't help but think, Hosanna, Hosanna, save us. Blessed is the king. A Pharisee as myself shouldn't be shouting this out. I knew the scriptures. I know the scriptures say that the true Messiah is going to come and rescue us and save us from the oppression of Rome. Not right in on some mere little cult, but yet, Hosanna, Hosanna, save us. And the thing that bothered me the most that evening, as I would think about what happened, is I would think about how many in those crowds really understood who Jesus was that day. I, I still doubted. I still had some doubts in my, whole, in my own life. Later that week, Jesus would be tried and would be arrested and tried. And the very people, the very people that were shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna, Yahweh, blessed is the King of Israel, were the very people that were shouting, crucify him, crucify him. I couldn't, I couldn't think this in my head. How were the very people who were shouting, save us, Lord, save us, you're the king of Israel. All of a sudden, most of those same people were shouting, crucify him, crucify him. And it dawned on me. It dawned on me at that very moment. I didn't know who Jesus was until that third day, when I heard rumors and stories about the disciples, his disciples, his followers going around the countryside shouting, he is alive, he is risen. And it dawned on me at that moment that the prophecies that I studied and that I knew had come true. Jesus was the Savior. He was the Messiah. I still had to, to formulate what that meant in my own life, but Jesus was the Messiah. Even a Pharisee as me who condemned people, who sent people to the jails to be arrested, even me, Jesus that day looked into my eyes and peered into my soul and my heart, and he convicted me at that moment. And many in the crowds that day, people who had been healed by Jesus, 
People who were inspired by the hope of Jesus. Even those people who hoped that this Jesus was the political Messiah that they wanted him to be to release them from their oppression. Many did not know that day. But on that third day, they knew it was him. And he rose from the dead. So, my friends, as you make that journey today, as you travel the Pilgrim's Road from Jericho into Bethany and then into Jerusalem, it is my prayer, it is my heart's prayer that you go not just to observe the ritual of the Passover, but that Jesus Christ has come. There's a man, there's another man who was a Pharisee, much like me. I hear that he's been traveling the world over, writing letters to different followers, proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ. I read one of his letters not too long ago, and he told, it it pierced my heart. Christ was crucified for me, even a Pharisee as me. Christ was crucified. And Christ has died for you. And I pray as you make that journey into Jerusalem over the next few days, it is my prayer that you will observe the Passover, you will honor this king because he has come not to establish, not to free us from oppression. He has come to set us free from the bondage of sin in our lives. It never seems to fail. Travelers during this time of year, pilgrims during this time of year, make their way right in here into Jericho. And I can't help but to tell this story. And I pray as you move in to Jerusalem over the days to observe the Passover, I pray that you will be transformed as well. Hannah, Hannah, don't worry about all the water in the and the, and the bread. I'm gonna take, I'm, we're going to take our friends now to go to uh, Jerusalem. We're going to stop in Bethany along the way. By the way, friends, I got a, another story I want to tell you. You heard of the, this tax collector named Nicodemus? Or Nicodemus? Or excuse me. Um, Ni- excuse me, guys. Zacchaeus. Excuse me, guys. Zacchaeus. A tax collector. Oh, how my dad hated tax collectors, buddy. But this tax collector, he climbed up into a tree, and they say he was saved. God saved that man. 